Hello and welcome to my science tutorials. In today's video, we want to look at problems involving RL series AC circuit. Now, before we begin, if you're new to my science tutorials, kindly consider subscribing and turning on the notification button so that you do not miss any of our latest tutorials on biology, chemistry, mathematics, and physics. So without further ado, let's jump into today's video. Now, in our previous tutorial, we did look at R and L circuit, where we talked about all the important formulas and all the important things we need to know about this particular R and L circuit. So over there, we talk about the circuit diagram, the phasor diagram, the voltage triangle, and the impedance triangle. If you've not watched that video, I will, link, I will leave a link in the description of this video so that you can go back and watch that. But once you are good to go or you already have a fair idea of what an R and L circuit is made of, you are good to go and you are good to start this tutorial. All right, so we have a question here. A coil consists of a resistance of 100 ohms and an inductance of 200 millihenry. If an alternating voltage V given by V is equal to 200 times 500T volts, is applied across the core, we are to calculate A, the circuit impedance, B, the current flowing through the circuit, C, the potential difference across the resistance, and D, the potential difference across the inductor, and lastly, E, the phase angle between the voltage and the current. So, this is very simple. So, let's go ahead and look at the solution for this particular problem. Alright, so we've been told that our core consists of resistance. So we have our R is equal to 100 ohms. And L, which is our inductance, is 200 millihenry. We've been told that the voltage is given in a waveform, which is equal to 200 sine 500T. And so... That is all we've been given and we've been asked to find the impedance, the current, and all other parameters. Okay, so for in an AC circuit, the voltage given in that particular um, wave format or in this wave format is not the voltage that we use. We use another voltage which we are calling the applied voltage or the root mean square voltage. Now, from here, the general formula is given as V is equal to V naught sine 2 pi F T. So if this is our equation 1 and this is our equation 2, comparing equation 1 and equation 2, we can see that V naught is equal to the 200 over here. And also, the, this is 200 volts. And then the 2 pi f over here is equal to the 500 we have over here. So 2 pi f is equal to the 500 we have over there. So that is in radians per second. Okay, now that we have this, to actually calculate the applied voltage in this particular circuit, which is our V that we'll be using for the calculation, this is equal to root 2 on 2 V naught or... 0 0.707 multiplied by v naught. This is how we find the voltage in this particular case. All right, so the first thing we've been asked to find A is the impedance of the circuit. So we know that the impedance in an R and L circuit is equal to the root of the resistance squared plus the inductive reactance squared. But if we look at the parameters that we have, we have the resistance, we have the inductance, but we don't have the inductive reactance. So we need to find that first. So XL is equal to, from our previous tutorial, we established the fact that XL is equal to 2 pi FL, where our F is the frequency, our L is the inductance that has been given to us over here. So from here, we can do the computation and we have our frequency, sorry, so from here we can see that the 2 pi f that we have over here has been given to us to be 500. So instead of having this, let me quickly erase that. 
we've been given this as a group so let's use that for the calculation so our 2 pi f is now 500 multiplied by the inductance of the inductor which is 200 millihenry milli is times 10 with the power negative 3 okay so if we compute this into our calculator we are going to get 100 ohms as our inductive reactance so now that we have our inductive reactance we can uh, just do the substitution back into this formula to get our impedance so our impedance is going to be our resistance is 100 squared plus another 100 squared and this is going to give us the root of 100 square plus 100 square is equal to 141.4 ohms so this is the impedance of the entire circuit now the b aspect of this question is asking us to find the current that is flowing through the circuit so we know that our voltage or the root mean square voltage is equal to i z we know our z which is the impedance but we don't know our voltage but remember i said that our voltage which is this voltage over here is equal to this formula which i'm saying root 2 on 2 v naught or 0.707 v naught so i'm going to use the 0.707 multiplied by the V naught, which we got from this expression that has been given to us in the question. And we established the fact that the V naught, comparing these two equations is equal to 200. So this will be multiplied by 200. So if we compute that into our calculator, we are going to get 141.4 ohms as, sorry, volts as our voltage. Now that we've established that fact, we can now go ahead and make current the subject over here. So if we make current the subject, we are going to have the ratio of voltage to the impedance. Now the, the voltage we have is 141.4 and then the impedance is also the same thing, 141.4. So this is going to give us a current of 1 amperes now the next thing we want to look at is the c aspect which is the potential difference across the resistance and then the potential difference across the inductor so let me get some space and then we continue Alright, very good. So our C, we have to find the potential difference across the resistor. The potential difference across the resistor is denoted by VR and then it's equal to IR, just like in Ohm's law. So this is going to be equal to our current is 1 and then our resistance, which has been given in the question to be 100, is over here. So it means our potential difference VR is equal to 100 volts. Now let's move to D. We have to find the potential difference across the inductance. So VL. Now VL is equal to IXL, where I is the current and then XL is the opposition to the flow of current in this particular circuit uh, when there is an inductor. So it's inductive reactance XL. So from here, we know our current is 1 and then our inductance, XL, inductive reactance, is also 100. So we have 100 here. So this is also going to give us 100 volts. All right. Now we did some calculation over here and then we said that our voltage, which is the applied voltage for the entire circuit, is 141. So if we do a quick cross check, to see whether this is true, applied voltage is equal to the root of VR squared plus VL squared. So that V is equal to the root of 100 squared, which is VR, what we found over here, plus VL, which is also 100 squared. And so if we compute this into the calculator, we are going to get 141.4 
fold, which is equal to what we found over here earlier on. All right, so let's look at the last aspect of this particular question. That is asking us to find the phase angle between the voltage and the current. Now, to find the phase angle between the current and the voltage, it is given by the formula tan the phase angle is equal to VL over VR. Now, now that we have this, we can make the phase angle the subject by taking the tan inverse of the ratio VL over VR. Now, the angle is now equal to the tan inverse of 100, which is the VL over here. Sorry, this is 100 volts. Okay, so this is 100 over 100, which is 1. And then the tan inverse of 1 is equal to 45 degrees. Okay, it means the phase angle or the phase angle between the voltage and then the current is at an angle 45 degrees. All right, let's have a look at another problem. We have a pure inductance, a pure inductance of 1.273 millihenry is connected in series to a pure resistance of 30 ohms. If the frequency of the sinusoidal supply is 5 kilohertz and the potential difference across the 30 resistor is 6 volt, we are to determine the value of the supply voltage and the voltage across the 1.273 millihenry inductance. We are also to draw the FISA diagram. Okay, so this is pretty easy. Let's go ahead and jump into the solution for this particular problem. So to enhance our understanding of uh, this question, let's draw the circuit. So we have a resistor, R, and then we have an inductance connected to an AC source over here. So this is our inductance L. We are saying we have an inductance of an inductor, inductor of an inductance 1.273 millihenry. We have uh, connected to a pure resistance of 30 ohms. So this is 30 ohms. Uh, we've been told that the frequency over here is 5 kilohertz. And we've also been told that the potential difference across the resistor, the 30 ohm resistor, is 6 volt. So it means that VR is equal to 6 volts over here. And then VL, we don't know what VL is. And so we have to calculate the applied voltage, which is the entire voltage over here. And then the voltage across this particular inductor so this is very very easy let's go ahead and look at how we do that now in this ac circuit because the components are connected in series the same current flows through all of them and so since we have the resistance over here the voltage across this component we also know that we can use these two guys to find the current and that will be the entire the same current for the entire circuit so let's go ahead and do that we know VR, which is the resistive voltage, is equal to IR. So from here, we make current the subject. We get VR over R, and that is equal to VR is 6, which is 6 over here. Then the resistance of the resistor is 30. So if we do the computation, we are going to get 0 0.2 amperes as the current flowing through this entire circuit. Now, the next thing we want to do is to find the supply voltage. Okay, so for us to find the supply voltage over here, we know that the supply voltage is given to us as V is equal to I Z, where Z is the impedance of the entire circuit. Now we already find we've already found the current, but we do not know our impedance so we need to find our impedance but our impedance is given to us as the root of the resistance squared plus the inductive reactance squared 
Here again, we realize that we do not also know our inductive reactance, so we have to find that. So our inductive reactance is given mathematically as 2 pi FL. So this is 2 pi. Our frequency we've been given to be 5 kilohertz, so we have 5 times 10 to the power 3 multiplied by our inductance, which is L, which has been given to us to be 1.273 times 10 to the power minus 3 over here. So our XL, if we compute entire of this into our calculator, we are going to get 40 ohms as our answer. So now that we have this to be 40 ohms, we can calculate our impedance. So Z is equal to the root of R is 30. So we have 30 squared plus 40 squared. So if we compute this side into our calculator and find the root, we are going to get 50 ohms as our impedance. So now that we have the impedance, we can just go and do the substitution back to equation 1 to find our supply voltage. So we know that our current is 0 0.2, which is what we found over here. And then our impedance is 50. So we just multiply the 2 to get our voltage. So 0 0.2 multiplied by 50 is going to give us 10 volts as our answer. So we have that as the supply voltage. Now let's find the voltage across the inductance that we have over here, VL. So let me do that at the top corner over here. So VL will be equal to IXL, the current multiplied by the inductive reactance. Now, we already know the current to be 0 0.2 and then we just found the inductive reactance along the process when we're, finding the, when we're finding the impedance. So that is 40. So we use that to multiply it. So it's 0 0.2 multiplied by 40 and that is going to give us 8 volts. So the voltage across this inductor is 8 volts. Now, to draw the fissure diagram, this is pretty easy. So let's go ahead and look at how we draw the fissure diagram for this problem. Okay. So the fissure diagram of an R and L series is to say it looks something like this. And then we have the applied voltage V itself over here and then we found that to be 10 V we have the resistive voltage VR at the base over here that was found to be 6 volts and then we also found our VL to be 8 volts that is also at the top over here now at the bottom over here as well current is also flowing in the direction of the resistive voltage so we have current over here to be equal to 0 0.2 amperes so we can just extend these guys to meet this guy over here. And then this angle becomes our phase angle. So this diagram is what we are calling the fissure diagram. So this is our fissure diagram for this particular problem. Now let's have a look at one more final example. So problem number three. A coil of inductance 159.2 millihenry and resistance 20 ohms is connected in series with a 60 ohm resistor to a 240 volt 50 hertz supply. We have to determine A, the impedance of the circuit, B, the current in the circuit, C, the circuit phase angle, D, the potential difference across the 60 ohm resistor, and E, the potential difference across the coil. So this is a very interesting question. So let's go ahead and write down our solution. Now for us to understand this particular question, let's have a look at the parameters that we have. So we've been told a core has an inductance. So we have a core, okay, that has an inductance L to be equal to 159.2 millihenry. And the same core has some internal resistance or a resistance of 20 ohms and then the circuit itself has the coil is connected to a 
resistor okay an external resistor which has 60 ohms and then we have a voltage of 240 volts 50 hertz supply all right so if we do this combination our circuit diagram is going to look something like this so we have a resistor and an inductor connected to another resistor and then connected to an ec source so the ac source has the voltage 240 volts and then 50 hertz supply we have our current which we do not know and then we have our resistance over here so this part is the core so let me use these dotted lines to indicate that so this side is the core so the coil is made up of the resistance which is a resistor 20 ohms and then an inductance of uh, 159 so we have 159.2 milli henry and then we have an external resistor here r2 equal to 16 ohms over here so the voltage across the coil over here this side is what we call v core or the applied potential difference across the core and then the applied potential difference across this resistor is vr as usual so this is our circuit diagram but we can simplify this entire circuit diagram to become something like this because this resistor and this resistor are in series okay and we know in series we add the resistance so the total resistance over here is going to be 80 and then connected to an inductor and then connected to an EC source so over here we have our current here we have our inductance here to be 159.2 milli henry so we can simplify this entire circuit as something that looks like this all right so now that we are done drawing the circuit diagram and we fairly understood the components that we have Let's go ahead and answer the questions that follow. So A, we have to find the impedance of the circuit. Now, to find the impedance of this circuit, we need to critically look at what we have. We have two resistors and then one inductor. Okay, so our resistance, the resistance in this entire circuit is the total AT that we have over here. So let me make this RT. So our impedance is going to be RT squared plus XL squared. So the RT is what I'm saying that it's the sum of 60 ohms over here and then the 20 ohms over here. So this is going to give us 80 ohms. Now our XL, which is the inductive reactance, is giving us 2 pi FL. And this is equal to 2 pi multiplied by the frequency 50 then multiplied by 159.2 times 10 to the power minus 300. So our inductive reactance, if we multiply everything over here, we are going to get 50 ohms. So now that we have this and then the total resistance, we can find the impedance for the entire circuit. So the impedance is going to be 80 squared plus 50 squared. So the root of all that we have over here is going to give us 94.34 ohms as our impedance. So now that we have the impedance, let's go ahead and find the current. So the B is saying we should find the current. So B, let me do it over here. We know voltage is equal to IZ. And so our current is equal to voltage over impedance. We know our voltage is 240 and then our impedance we just found to be 94.34. So if we compute everything over here into the calculator, we are going to get our current to be equal to 2.544 amperes. All right, so now that we've found our current we found our impedance let's go ahead and uh, solve the rest of the questions so let me get some space over here 
All right. So let's look at the C aspect of this question. So the C is asking us to find the circuit phase angle. So to find the phase angle, we have tan a phase angle is equal to. Now, because we've not found the voltage of the coil and then the voltage of the resistance, we can use that because ideally this is supposed to be equal to V coil over VR. But because we do not have that, we are going to use XL over R. Okay, so the tan phase angle is equal to the XL, which is what we found earlier on the inductive reactance, which we said we found out to be 50. So we have 50 over the resistance over here is going to be the total resistance. So from here is 80. So this means our fixer angle or the fixed angle is equal to the tan inverse of the ratio 50 to 80 or 5.8. So our fixed angle is equal to the tan inverse of this ratio is going to give us 32 degrees. All right. So now that we found the fixed angle, let's go ahead and tackle the B aspect of this question. The D is asking us to find the potential difference across the 60 ohms resistor. So that is very easy. So VR over here is equal to IR. And then we already found our current, which I just erased previously. So we found that to be 2.544 multiplied by the resistance of the resistor over here, which is 60. And so that is going to give me 152.6 volts all right so let's look at e the e is in the potential difference across the core v core over here now the v core is going to be equal to the current multiplied by the impedance of the core v core because the core is not only having an inductor it also has a resistor over here so let me get some space and then we continue. So let me clean this over here. Okay, so how do we find the Z core? So the Z core, which is the impedance of the core, is equal to the root of the resistance of the core and then the, in, the capacitive inductance of the core. Now, the capacitive inductance of the coil is equal to 2 pi. The frequency is 50 multiplied by the inductance, which is 159 over here. So we have 159.2 milli Henry. So XL, if we multiply everything that we have over here, we are going to get 50 ohms as our answer. So now that we've been able to find this, we can do the substitution to find the impedance of the core. So the impedance of the core is equal to the root of our R is 20. So we have 20 squared plus we just found our XL to be 50. So we have 50 squared. So if we compute this into the calculator, the impedance of the core, which is set core, is going to be equal to 53.85 ohms. So now that we found that, we can find the V core very easily. We already found our current to be 2.544 multiplied by the impedance of the core, which we just found to be this guy. We multiply that with it. So it's going to be 53.85. So if you multiply 2.544, by 53.85 we are going to get 137 volts as the voltage or the potential difference across the core so thank you so much for watching this is how we solve some further problems on an r and l series ac circuit so thank you once again for watching and i will see you in the next video bye bye